Okay. Let me break this down. Coming up next hour at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, the big report that Paul Watson and I have been working on since last night is going up with the videos that I've already shot that are on the uh, Alex Jones YouTube channel. Obama establishing dictatorship is one of them. And then if you expand, uh, there's another Obama attempting to set up dictatorship. I shot two different videos. Now, understand, people are going to say, oh, you said that was happening under Bush. You said it was happening under Obama. No, I've always been clear. They are transferring power to the federal government. They are destroying the republic. They are destroying checks and balances with Homeland Security, TSA, destroying Tenth Amendment rights. Remember I told you eight years ago, TSA would start being on the streets because I watched them on C-SPAN say that was their plan. And to buy or sell or have a job, you'll have TSA authorization on your ID card. To buy a gun, you'll have authorization. What did Obama announce on Friday? We now have the details from even the NRA's own website and the Huffington Post praises it. Obama to sign an executive order and to do what Rahm Emanuel, we have that in our video reports, called for when he was a congressman and then as a chief of staff, a no-fly, no-buy. They That was always the plan. I saw under Ridge. This isn't just Obama, folks. They were talking about this eight years ago on C-SPAN with the TSA and Governor Ridge. And I've since pulled up the original transcripts and articles and proven all that. So they're telling us what they're going to do. And the Huffington Post, in an article, Obama to unveil gun control reforms in the near future, uh, they, uh, the White House uh, spokesman says that, don't worry, this is stuff we can all agree on. That's mind control. We can all agree I'm going to come to your house and you're going to sign the deed over for nothing to me. We all agree I'm going to come over to your house and you're going to give your model wife to me, Bob. We all agree that you're going to give me all your jewelry. We all agree on that. You're like, oh, we all agree. See, it's all a Svengali mind control move, and uh, that's the way they're spinning it. Oh, it's just some reasonable executive order uh, to add some things into the instant check. And not that you're a felon or even a misdemeanor, but that we think you might have mental problems after Jared Lee Loftner. Because there's crazies like him, now you've all got to give up your rights, and we're going to put you on magic list like no-fly list. And they go on to say... Still, executive actions offer something that legislation doesn't. Guaranteed results. Man, getting tough. And as one gun control advocate told the Huffington Post, there are ways to, quote, use these administrative changes to obtain similar results. And uh, he's going to order the attorney general to just restrict more uh, international guns legally being shipped in. Uh, also, they tried last year in Texas, uh, right through to California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico. Remember telling gun shops? Uh, you can only sell one gun now. And they said, but that's not the law. And they said, well, we're telling you because of U.S. guns going into Mexico causing violence. Turns out they were the ones shipping them in. 30,000 guns. Most of the media keep, keep saying um, 1,800. But if you go to Reuters and the court filings, now this is Reuters, U.S. agents slam gun sting effort on Mexico border. Of the nearly 30,000 firearms recovered in 2010 where gun is possessed, some 70% were determined to have come from the United States, and it turns out most of those from the ATF shipment. So there you go. And, and, and the truth is most of the guns you do find in Mexico that are from the U.S., the normal semi-auto and stuff, that's things that Mexicans get illegally to protect themselves. The cartels are using fully auto, grenade launchers, armored vehicles. Okay. And the people are trying to defend themselves. And, oh, you can't do that. So continuing here, Obama to unveil gun control reforms in the near future. And guess what? He's going the executive route. Uh, Obama can't get his Internet kill switch passed in cybersecurity. So what have they announced? Earlier this year, they're going ahead with it. And the four branches of the military to go ahead and just take over the web and do whatever they want. And, quote, set up a new separate Internet as the former head of the CIA uh, uh, Hayden said over the weekend, quote, another second Internet for government and trusted users to stop hackers. And the Stuxnet worm, which they admit the U.S. and Israel launched. They publicly launch it, admit they launch it tacitly, and then you've got to lose your Internet freedom and you've got to be taxed and have an Internet ID and go into this new controlled Internet as they shut the old one down because they launched the Stuxnet. They actually say, we've got to do this because of Stuxnet. By the way, we launched it. We shipped the guns in Mexico. We launched the Stuxnet. 
We staged the Gulf of Tonkin, ha, 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 we'll do whatever we want. They just caught a CIA guy two months ago. That's even in Associated Press now, giving radioactive material to the Taliban in Pakistan, trying to get them to blow stuff up so they could then blame the Pakistani military for it as a pretext to invade those guys. But when we come back, I want to get into all the other ways the executive's power grabbing. Guns, carbon taxes, uh, health care waivers to companies that are insiders, uh, the, the war. Uh, not consulting Congress. I mean, are you getting it? I mean, and, and Congress people are calling this a dictatorship. That's what it is. Let's call it what it is. We're yeah, Ron Paul, Congressman Nadler, even Senator Franken, Congressman Kucinich, they've all come out and said that a dictatorship of the executive is being set up. Ron Paul called it the last nail in the republic's coffin. Congressman Nadler, senior Democrat, said that Obama is becoming a king or emperor. But again, we've been wrong all these years about dictatorship and martial law being set up. They're, they're never going to call it dictatorship. They're never going to call it martial law. But when the states and even the Congress tell the president not to do something and he goes ahead and does it and says, I don't need to, to, to talk to you, when in the Constitution, the Congress is the boss, they're not co-equal. That's a more modern propaganda. And, and, and then they've moved to telling you the president's the boss. If you read the Federalist Papers and, and, and other founding debates, it's 100% clear. Congress is numero uno. Legislatures are numero uno. They are the lawgivers. Next is the court that, that, that checks the law to see that it's constitutional. And next is the minion, and that's the executive. That's the executive that executes, whether it's the governor or whether it's the president. Whether it's the mayor, it's the same thing. Now, if you look at what's going on, with Obama and the executive, it's crystal clear. Congress controls the purse springs, uh, the power of the purse and the purse strings. Uh, the Congress uh, levies war, declares war, launches military actions, or defense of the border. And what has Obama been saying in the last year? He says, I'll launch any war I want, and I don't even need to talk to Congress. He says, I'll set up carbon taxes through the bureaucracy, and I don't care if Congress voted down our carbon taxes two years ago and again a year ago. I don't care. I'm going to order the EPA to do it. I don't care if Congress, and that's actually in these articles, the White House frustrated that Congress won't pass more, quote, gun control, that is victim disarmament. Oh, Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Uh, the first gun control laws in this country were enacted after blacks attained their freedom on paper at the end of the Civil War with the Emancipation Proclamation. And the first gun laws were passed from New York State uh, to Kansas to Florida, you name it, that blacks could own guns. Or that you had to pay a fee to get them. It, it varied state to state. But the point is the, the, the ATF, who had been whiskey regulators... That's why they were so famously corrupt, because they would come shake down your still if you weren't paying you know, taxes on the local whiskey you were making or moonshine, and they became notoriously corrupt because you could pay them off. Uh, they suddenly started enforcing gun laws. Oh, yes. They weren't even called ATF then. They were called Federal Whiskey Tax Assessors and Enforcers, the first federal armed agents outside of the U.S. Cavalry. And here they come. And boy, they'd kick down those black people's doors, and they'd come in there, and they'd find that shotgun, and they'd say, boy, you think you're allowed to own a gun? And that, was, that gun butt would go right in those teeth. You don't have a shotgun to protect yourself from the Ku Klux Klan when they come a-riding to shoot up your house and burn it down. Because there were cases of black folks getting guns, getting together, and defending themselves. You don't do that. We're going to take your guns. Didn't you read the fine print of the law we passed?
this is the type of garbage that we're dealing with and facing. And so he says he's coming out with executive orders and, 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 and other bureaucratic moves, including putting you on a no-gun buy list when you have no criminal record. And that's been their plan for three years, even before they got in office. You know, Emmanuel said it as a congressman and then as a chief of staff, and now that's what they're saying they're going to do. And the Huffington Post praises it. They say, wow, we like this executive power. We really, really, really like it. And you notice there's Time Magazine, Newsweek, CNN, all these publications. I covered it a few weeks ago on the 4th of July. Demonizing the entire Constitution and saying it's trash, get rid of it. And they've got uh, the, the CNN host, the rest of them, all, the Council on Foreign Relations coming out against that evil Constitution with the right to defend yourself the right to have private property, that your home is your castle, that no one is above the law, uh, fair weights and measures, no indentured servitude, all these horrible things that they demonize 24-7. Say what you want about the founding fathers. This was their ideas. It didn't even mean they implemented it all when they got into power. The point is, it's the idea that has flowered and that others looked at and picked up. So continuing uh, here... Obama says he doesn't need Congress to pass cybersecurity. He's just implementing the Internet kill switch and takeover system on his own. The Pentagon now has admitted they've built their own private Internet. They're going to force you onto where you have no rights. Associated Press this weekend, as we told you a decade ago, from the Internet to documents that are public. They tell you what they're going to do. That's what's so frustrating. Uh, continuing, what did, what did Obama say over the weekend? But it didn't go over too well. Uh, we covered this yesterday. He came out and he said, if the states... Well, that goes back to the Civil War. He said, we will use a clause in the 14th Amendment used against the states and, and, and members of the Congress, the federal Congress from the states, if the federal Congress does not raise the debt ceiling to the foreign bankers, this was in AFP, you name it, yesterday. I shot videos on it last night and covered it on the radio show. That if you don't raise the debt ceiling and give more to the bankers that, that, that have hijacked the government and have set up this dictatorship of the bureaucracy with the president now, the head criminal, uh, publicly, the figurehead, if you don't do that, we will simply in, uh, use the uh, powers that the president used during Reconstruction. I guess that'd be Ulysses S. Grant. We will use those powers... And we don't need the Congress. So he doesn't need the Congress to launch new wars in Libya, even when the Pentagon's own lawyers tell him he does. Never before done. He doesn't need uh, the Congress now to raise taxes and to get us deeper into debt, according to them. Of course, the Congress controls the purse strings. They don't care. He doesn't need the Congress to pass a law for carbon taxes. He doesn't need the Congress uh, to pass uh, a law on any of these things. They're just going to do it. And he doesn't need the states anymore. Why even have states? Because he set up the 10 governors in the governor's council. Bush started this. Cheney was the main guy who said he was above the law in a separate branch of government. I remember that. A fourth branch of government, he claimed, uh, as an executive, which, of course, the constitutional law scholars, everybody laughed at, but he still operated that way. This started under Bush, and then Obama signed the order and got it into place where we don't talk to the 50 governors and the elected legislatures. No, we now have a 10 governor council that the president picks that are his little lapdogs that sit over each of the 10 FEMA regions set up in 1979 that we told you that's what FEMA was for. Because it came out in 86 in Rex 84 hearings in Congress. We played the clips that... FEMA was set up to be a martial law takeover system over the states. And then in 2007, the John Warner Defense Authorization Act openly said, we're setting this up to use the U.S. military against states if governors or legislatures don't follow orders. It actually says it and funded the entire Defense Department set up and NORTHCOM, which was already set up but empowered in 2007, to actually be the receivership arm over the states, and now they have the 10 FEMA regions with the 10 governors over it. But wait, there's more.